is good. God, God is great. And He's greatly to be praised. I have just a thought that I'd like to share with you this morning. In 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 8, it says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion walking about, seeking whom he may devour. I, I think I want to speak with you for this this morning, and I will use myself because I realize that if I say you, then obviously you you'll be thinking that I'm talking about you. I think all of us here this morning have a adversary. We like to do nothing more than destroy all of our lives, our weakness our testimony, our homes, our walk with God, and every part of all of our lives. When you look at this, he says, your adversary, walking about as a worrying lion. Now, there's two things. One, when you look at the devil, he's also references in in scripture referred to him as even, you know, in the nature of a snake, um, you know, serpent. And when you look at that description, I don't know, um, I, we, we were away yesterday at a conference for the Atlanta Food Bank. Um, we were talking about old people and um, grandparents who have um, animals. Some of them have birds, dogs, different kind of pets. So anyway, someone says, what about lizards or um, snake? And once you mention that snake, everybody just has a different feeling about that. I think, you know, for some of you, you guys, you probably don't have a problem with snake. But for most people, or most of us, we don't like snake. We don't like the nature of snake Amen. and what it represents. And when you look at a lion, you know, when, 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 when Peter says, walk it about as a roaring lion, you have to really put that in context and understand the nature of a lion. A lion is the most fierce king of the beast. A lion is the, the, the most powerful, strongest animal in the whole entire animal kingdom. A lion is very, very strong. A lion can destroy any of and all of his prey. A lion can run 35 miles an hour, hour after hour, and never stops. A lion can drag away a 600 pound zebra. It takes nine grown men to do the same. A lion roars to scare off any other competition that would come to, to um, bother him. A lion can see through pitch black dark. A lion is, and so Peter says, he goes forth like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. We're no match to a lion. We're no match to, to the devil. Amen. And we fool ourselves, all of us, when we think that we can play with him. He wants to destroy our minds. He wants to destroy our hearts. He wants to destroy our marriages for those of us who are married. He wants to destroy our lives, our testimony. He wants to destroy our worship, our integrity. And so we have to ensure that we are constantly feeding our minds, feeding ourselves with the Word of God, put good things into our spirit, ensuring that you know, the time we spend um, on, um, on in, in media, take some time. I don't care how young you, you are, to take the word of God and make it a part of who you are. You know, put away Facebook, and um, they told me that um, some of these things, you know, it's kind of weird, because I said, MySpace and my children laughed, they said, Dada is so gone. <laughs> so, um, there's so many things now, I can't even keep up with them, they change like, 
seems like it used to be once a year, but now they're like almost monthly. But all the different, the new deals that's going on, I heard of one called Kick, never seen it. But stay away from all of those things and Instagram and, and um, Snapchat um, and all of those things and, and, and put the Word of God in you. Yeah. So when the enemy of your soul comes to challenge your mind and your heart, you can have that sure foundation that is based on the Word of God. The Word of God will keep you. The Word of God will protect your heart and your mind. Amen. The Word of God is powerful. It is sharper than any toy sword. It's the Word of God that will keep us from the attack of the enemy of our soul, the devil, the lion, who wants to just ravage us. <coughs> we have to put the Word of God into our system. We have to make it a part of our everyday life. I'm so blessed to come to a school this morning. I work for the school system. And I'm certain that there is not a reference to the Word of God in no public school setting. But to hear Psalms, I mean John 3, you know, quoted from verse 1 to verse 19, how refreshing it is that you're getting the Word of God every single day. I trust that many of you, if not all of you, have already read the Word this morning. You know why? You're putting things in your life. You're putting in God into your hearts and your lives. So when the enemy comes, and he comes against you like a flood, the Scripture says, the Spirit of God that lifts a standard against him, you can resist the devil. The Word of God is powerful. The Word of God will keep you. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By what? Take. Taking heed according to the Word of God. The Word of God, David said, I, 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 I will hide your word in my heart that I may not sin against you. God exalted his word above his name. He said before one jot, one tinkle of, 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 of heaven and earth will pass away before one of his word will pass away. You know, the Word of God it is the entryway to life. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was God. The Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. We beheld His glory. The Word of God is what will keep us, keep our minds and our hearts in perfect peace. So, when the enemy comes against you with a destructive force to, 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 to ravage your mind and to get you off track and to get you to disobey your parents or any kind of authority, you go back to what the Word of God says. Satan has no power over a man or woman or a child that understands the power in the Word of God. He cannot destroy us. We have an anchor that keeps our soul. It is steadfast and sure by the Lord's role. It is grounded to the rock, which cannot be removed. It's grounded firm and deep in the Savior's love. We have to go back to the Word of God. We have to establish that, 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 that fact that God's Word is a keeper. And can I say to you, you're not too young to know the Word of God. You're not too young to love the Word of God. And make it a priority in your mind and your life every single morning before you, yeah. you, um, you do anything else. Pray. Pray that God will bless your life. Pray that God will give you good grades. Pray that God will help you to pay attention in school. Um, will respect the authority that's been placed in your life. You know what? It's the Word of God that, that serves as the basis for us to do righteousness, to do truth, to be obedient, to resist the onslaught of Satan. It's the Word of God that helps us to obey our parents. Paul said in the Lord, because it is right. It is the Word of God that will keep us from Satan trying to devour us. Use God's word. Make it a lamp unto your feet. Make it a light unto your heart. Have. Love it more than your necessary food. Heed that word. Read <coughs> that word. Speak that word. Read that word. Memorize that word. So when Satan come against you, you can go back to the word of God. You know what? It was the word that Jesus Christ used against him, when he came against him in Luke chapter 4. It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. It is the word of God that will give us the, the victory over the onslaught of Satan and demons. I trust this morning 
that you guys will understand your enemy and um, you know you'll be obedient children and young people who will follow on to know the Lord and you are so blessed I, I can't help but say this every time I come <coughs> just to see what happens at the school and the heartbeat of the faculty here and the administration you know to put to instill the Word of God in your hearts and in your minds don't ever take this place for granted I, I, I say to all of you this morning, just realize how blessed you are to be in a school that can propagate and extol the Word of God and put the Word of God into your hearts and in your minds. And some of you, you may not get that at home, I don't know, but at least you come to a place where the Word of God is, is, is placed in a high value and this premium that's placed on God's Word. And interwoven in all of your, your, your school, the Word of God is so dear. I look at um, especially he, um, Isaac, you know, you can see the word of God. You are blessed immensely beyond measure to be in a school that promote and, and teach you godly concepts and ideals and principles so that you can be successful. Hear me. Uh, <clears throat> a young lady uh, met me, well, one, she wanted to speak with me and she said, you know, Pastor, I want to, you know, do some tutoring. And, um, and she actually is a teacher. And I said, well, you know, it's good if you want to do that. I think, you know, right now the need is for us to continue to work in the outreach center that we have. Because we have a lot of people that come and they need food and clothing. And so anyway, she said, you know what, my passion is not for that. My passion is for education. And, um, and I said to myself, you know, next time I meet with her, you know, there are times when, you know, someone's speaking to you, you forget some per pertinent things that you should say. So I want to ask you the next time I talk to her, I said, so if your passion is for education, why are you not teaching Sunday school? Why are you not in Awana? Because you know what? Cycle education is good and we should never deny that. We, we need it if we're going to be successful in life. If you want to be successful, you have to be successful in Christ. Amen. And um, it has to be in the Word of God, and we should promote that over. I tell my kids often, if you never become a doctor, a lawyer, or any things that we deem very important in our society, as long as you live for God, Amen. as long as you love God, and love, and love the ways of God, and work for God, I would be a successful parent. No, in truth, all of us as parents would like to see our kids excel and do great things. But for me, I've already said on that, that I want them to know God. I'm happy that my children do well in school. I'm happy that Isaac make the honor roll. But can I tell you this? Um, the A honor roll, but you know what? In his own, he, he does just as well. In fact, there are times better in Oman. And I embrace that more that when he comes and make a unroll, because that means so much more to me. Because you know what? I don't want him to become an educated fool. I have a brother who has excelled well. I've gone to school economics at <coughs> Oxford, and his PhD as a, at a young age, but he don't know God. So what's the use? <coughs> I've been mean, all that education and don't know God. You will get the word of God Embrace the Word of God and just realize that you can have real success outside of Christ. You cannot. God bless you. How many are going to do very well today? Have a wonderful day. Thank you for having me and God bless all of you. What he said is true. The Word of God is the most important important thing that we have in this school, memorizing it, but not only of memorizing it, applying it. James said, be doers of the word and not hearers only. Too many people know about God and they hear about God, but they don't do anything with God. And so we want you to be doers of the word today, all right? All right, very quietly, let's return, LC2.